Hello, my name is uh, Derek Inlander. I'm a physician in practice in Manhattan, and this is another uh, in the series of ME-CFS, my myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome. Today, actually, uh, we're going to actually interview Austin Page. He's the chief financial officer of Nexico uh, Company who actually makes um, Nexavir. This is a substance that uh, we have actually um, been looking at in the treatment of uh, ME-CFS. Well, I appreciate you having me here. Thank you. Uh, maybe actually we should uh, go into uh, the history, um, Austin, of um, uh, Nexavir and how it actually um, was basically uh, st we started off actually um, with cutopressin. Let's start off with the history of cutopressin. Sure. Uh, early in the 1900s, uh, 1930s, 1940s, uh, a gentleman working with Schwartz Farmer basically created a cream or a paste that was used for treatment of rashes. Effectively, poison ivy, poison oak, uh, sumac, uh, sunburn even, and uh, patients were using it for acne, for treatment of shingles, and for uh, chickenpox. So later on, 20 years later or so, research really got very focused upon doing uh, testing why this particular cream worked so well for shingles and for chickenpox, because those are viral as opposed to uh, a rash of some sort that you would get a contact or a sunburn. Uh, in doing so, a group of researchers, uh, I know you, you yourself have done quite a bit of research with it, uh, as well as uh, professors in Europe and a couple of people in Houston, who began using uh, cutopressin at the time for treatment of or testing of uh, its antiviral capabilities and also its uh, anti-inflammatory capabilities. Uh, and so a group in Houston at the time decided that uh, they were going to start testing this, and they'd spent a considerable amount of money in research doing some tests with it when Schwartz Pharma had decided that, from their perspective, it, it was not a profitable line uh, and shut down production of cutopressin. Uh, this team in Houston convinced uh, Mr. Sani, who was my boss, uh, to purchase the rights to make uh, cutopressin from Schwartz Pharma, and he did so in early 2000s. And in doing so, basically, we got the rights to the formula and marketing rights to cutopressin, uh, which we renamed Nexavir. Uh, so that's a brief history of where we came from and how we are, and, and, and the use of Nexavir uh, up to today, I guess. So the, uh, the original group was the, the Herman uh, Steinbach uh, that's, uh, group. That's correct, yes. And they actually did uh, this uh, seminal work uh, on uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, myalgic cephalomyelitis uh, treatment. Yes, they did. They did. And then Roger uh, Asaniachi uh, was um, a friend uh, of um, Professor DeBakey. Yes, uh, he was a close friend of Professor DeBakey uh, and also a friend with, uh, of Dr. Herman's. That's, Dr. Herman was the one that brought him in with the prospect of buying the rights from Schwartz so that they could continue work with uh, Cudipressin now next year. I think actually we should uh, emphasize that um, Schwartz Pharma actually did not um, uh, stop um, manufacturing um, cutopressin for any uh, medical reason. No. It was basically uh, an economic financial um, uh, decision. That, that's a good point, yes. Absolutely a financial decision and uh, the market for using that for rashes and things like that just wasn't significant enough so they, they pulled the product purely for economic reasons. And uh, there was no actually uh, problem um, no. Uh, patient-wise, because uh, uh, this is particularly a, s a safe uh, product. It is. Uh, Nexavir is actually formulaically exactly the same as cutopressin. It's, uh, it's made from the same process, from the same ingredients. Um, it, is, it is identical to cutopressin in every way. Uh, and Nexavir cutopressin has a history of over 60 years with no uh, significant adverse effects. It's a uh, porcine uh, amino acid complex? It is, yes. And uh, it actually um, is manufactured in um, New Zealand? It is. Um, I, I was unaware of this when, when I first started, but there's a significant difference in quality of pigs around the country. And New Zealand apparently has, has a good uh, stock of pigs that are a great source for this particular product, for the liver. 
there's an interesting um, uh, question actually that uh, is uh, raised, especially in New York, uh, where there are a lot of Orthodox Jews, uh, and halakhically, um, the question is whether, in fact, actually um, porcine amino acid complex can be used. And the question uh, has been actually posed to the uh, Satmar Rabbi and Rebertson, and they have emphatically uh, stated that it has to actually be used. Uh, and basically, there's a statement is called the Kuas Nefesh, where the actual patient has to actually uh, be treated, actually, um, and if they aren't treated, then it's even worse. And a, there's a very similar doctrine in, in, in Islamic faith that governs the same way. It's uh, it's not a problem to deal with a pork product if it's for a medicinal purpose, and I don't know that they go so far as to say it is a problem if you don't, but um, it works very similar. Uh, what What is the actual um, outcome of uh, new developments in, in uh, cutopressin? Cutopressin uh, at the moment is given uh, as an intramuscular injection. It is. Um, we've got some history uh, of tests that have been done with making it into a patch, a transdermal patch, uh, also a cream, and uh, we've had some experience uh, creating a suppository in cases where they need a very significant first dose of it. Uh, so those three ways we currently have, uh, we have the availability to manufacture any of those, uh, and we are looking at and working on coming out with a capsule form. What, what is the uh, equivalent dosage, um, capsule-wise, to the actual injection? Yeah, they should be the same. Uh, what we're working on is the two milliliter injection and an equivalent in the capsule. So one, one injection would be equivalent to? One capsule. One capsule. Yes. And actually, uh, when, when do we actually consider that uh, these capsules might be uh, available? Uh, to be safe, I would say the end of September. Um, and September 2011. Correct. <laughs> the, the end of the uh, two months from now. That's fantastic. Uh, and uh, how do we actually compare uh, cutopressin with other substances that are used actually in the treatment of uh, MECFS? Well, uh, again, I'm not a scientist, but my understanding is uh, Nexavir plays a role as an uh, adjutant to the immune system in those cases. And uh, I know there are a variety of supplements that can be taken to enhance its effectiveness, um, but you may know a little bit more than I do about the research that's out there in that area. We've actually um, used cutopressin actually for about 15 years. Uh, now we're now actually using um, Nexavir. And we actually have found that it's a very safe um, uh, product. Um, the only um, problem possibly actually uh, with the cutopressin injection is uh, local uh, tenderness at the site of injection, which actually uh, quickly passes within uh, 24 hours. But uh, there have been no actually deaths um, uh, from this product uh, over the past 30 years, is that correct? That is correct, actually over the past 60 years. So, and there actually has been very um, little um, hypersensitive reaction to the product. Uh, that we know of, there really aren't, aren't any at this point. Uh, the actual uh, substance um, is um, a pinkish brownish um, uh, color and is injected actually um, classically in uh, 2 ml doses and some people actually use it uh, somewhat less, some people use somewhat more. Uh, but um, in uh, the various researchers who have used it actually uh, uh, people actually uh, have uh, found uh, some benefit. Is there anything else you would like to add uh, that um, Roger has got uh, thoughts on? <laughs> well, I think the, the biggest initiative we have right now is getting Nexavir into a form and to people uh, as effectively and cost effectively as possible. So we, we realize that uh, there is, you know, money is an issue and the price of it is an issue and we're working on uh, overcoming that. And hopefully this capsule form will be a, a big part of that uh, process to overcome the rather expensive price that we currently have. Uh, cutopressin is, um, cutopressin and Nexavir, uh, uh, is FDA approved? It is for uh, acne and skin rashes, yes. Um, the use of um, cutopressin and Nexavir uh, in CFS is basically uh, an ancillary use, it's an off-label use, uh, but it is not actually uh, counter-regulated uh, by the FDA. That, as far as I know, that's correct, yes. <laughs> 
um, it's actually uh, perfectly legitimate to actually use uh, Nexavir uh, in uh, the uh, case of, of uh, an ME-CFS patient. Is there anything actually um, that we would like to actually see um, uh, uh, in uh, the um, short um, uh, future uh, uh, as a development uh, other than what we've actually uh, discussed? Any other things that we might actually hope uh, about cutopressin? Well, uh, I mean, we are not necessarily on top of all the latest research and, and some uses that have been coming out of it, so you might know a little bit more about it than I do. But again, from our standpoint, uh, the cost is, is the biggest factor right now. Uh, and we're looking at some different alternatives in terms of production, uh, that kind of thing, to, to get that cost down and to get it to people a little bit faster than, than normal. Um, beyond that, that's those are our major issues. Well, basically, in summary, um, Nexavir and Cutopressin actually are, are um, at present um, uh, an injection, uh, an intramuscular injection, which are used actually um, in this uh, particular uh, setting uh, for MECFS. And actually, we believe that the uh, porcine amino acid complex acts on the immune system. Um, we're not quite sure the exact point of action, but we believe actually that the uh, uh, methylation cycle is actually a defective in um, MECFS and perhaps actually the amino acid complex in um, Nexavir is a supplement to actually uh, this uh, defect and deficiency in the uh, amino, amino acid uh, complexing of the uh, methylation cycle. So, in summary, I uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate uh, I you my, having me. I send my regards to Roger, <laughs> and perhaps actually um, on our next actually interview, we will actually have um, the new uh, capsules um, uh, to talk about, and perhaps actually a review of uh, the lotion and suppositories. Excellent. So, I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Ross. I thank you very much. <laughs>